what it is what's up basketball in the cut um my channel has become more of a gaming channel recently but i've literally been trying to do less basketball videos because they don't do well but every once in a while we do something in basketball that makes you want to just react to it um same thing in football although usually more negative and positive um uh number 16 auburn 91 uh Ole Miss 77 and um I don't think the score does it justice. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into like the minute by minute scoring, but basically Auburn got down 13 to two, I believe at one point early, scrapped back, then got down by 13 uh, kind of later in the first half, finished, I believe, with a nine point deficit in the first half. And um, pretty much from the jump in the second half, just really storing back. Uh, they had a couple of those, like, I always say if you're going to do a comeback, you need, like, a good 507 0 run. And they got one of those pretty much almost immediately coming out the halftime. Uh, I believe it was Broom on a three-pointer, then Broom on an and one, something like that. Uh, but basically, they come back. It's kind of punch against punch for a while. We're basically almost tied to a short Auburn deficit for – I'd say about the middle third of the, the second half. And then Auburn just goes on a stretch where you're just like, okay, they're up five, six consistently. And the dam breaks at the end where you kind of have to where they start draining the outside shots. Uh, Ole Miss can't get nothing around the rim, all that stuff. So, again, not score by score, minute by minute breakdown. But more or less, this is a game that Ole Miss controlled heavily for at least half of it, I would say. And um, completely just lost the rope, so to speak, in the second half. And a big part of that was Auburn elevating its performance, not just Ole Miss sucking air and just, you know, somehow missing shots or whatever. Because Ole Miss, they had the opportunities, even sometimes in the second half, were still making shots. But uh, Auburn just choked out a lot of those opportunities. So to look at it from statistical performance, I think the most important thing to look at here is minutes. As you know, with Auburn, they want to play 10, and if they can get away with it, 11 against most teams, including good teams. Um, but philosophically, philosophic, philosophically, yeah, that's what I want to say. Ideologically speaking, <laughs> the, uh, the kind of modes operandi had to switch up a little bit here for them to win this one. They gave some Berman minutes. I believe he was negative seven in those minutes. Uh, they don't have plus or minus, I guess, on ESPN for college. But uh, I believe someone said he was negative seven in those minutes. Um, this is ESPN, so maybe on Auburn's bot score, they do have it. He got three minutes. Um, no no counting stats whatsoever. No negative, no positives, no counting stats. Um, Chaney got 13 minutes. I, I think last game he had some mental mistakes, but he's had a pretty strong... Uh, offensive effort, I feel like, overall in the last like handful of games. Uh, Cardwell got 15. This was a game where even though Broom was clearly the best player on both sides of the court, um, he, you know, 15 points, you know, seven assists, nine. I'm going to go into Broom a little bit more in, in detail, but 25 minutes. Uh, Cardwell gave him 15 a little bit more egalitarian and uh, democratized than you would think based on the impact. But uh, Cardwell wasn't really a negative per se. He just kind of served to give Broom a rest. Uh, those platoon swaps that Auburn's pretty much famous for at this point, uh, I'm not always a fan of them because I watched the NBA where people do pl platoon swaps and get fucking killed in, in those uh, minutes. But obviously college is a little bit different and Auburn's a little bit different than most college teams. And... Um, Honestly, it wasn't that bad. I mean, because you look at it, Katie gave you 13 minutes. This was has to be by far the most extended run Denver got as a starting two. And this is one of, if not the best Denver game, I could say in the challenge. Um, but Katie in those 13 minutes gave you like 4-4, four, four, uh, perfect from the three-point line, perfect from the free throw line, uh, one rebound, or two rebounds rather, uh, three assists, one steal. I mean... In terms of efficiency, and only two personal fouls. In terms of efficiency, like pretty much as good as you're gonna ever see a backup two guard really play. And then that's considering that his running mate 
in the bench lineup was Chad Baker Mazar, who played 26 minutes. Um, actually, pretty much about what they normally have in terms of Chris Moore, uh, Chad, kind of breakdown. Uh, 26 minutes, he went 5 of 10, went 3 assists from 3, hit some huge open ones, 2 of 2 from the stripe, 9 rebounds, uh, 2 assists, only 1 turnover. Um, so just a huge oh, 4 fouls, but overall just a huge game from uh, Chad and KD. If you can get those most nights from those two, the uh, the open threes, the creation. Uh, KD had a couple of really just stellar passes in this one. Um, and Aiden actually made some shots. A um, couple drives to the, the rim, drew a foul, and a pretty neat little layup. Uh, made one open three, you know, one of four, not great, obviously. Um, only played 15 minutes. I don't know if this is the biggest gap in time between Trey and Aiden's minutes. I feel like it may be, uh, but it was deserved. Like, Trey was huge. I mean, in the beginning parts of this game, his two threes, his two makes from three were when they were really putting up some points. Uh, Ole Miss early at the beginning of the game, Trey gave him six straight himself and uh I've kind of finished it up with um some good drives to the rim one really really stellar move when he had a they did some some sets where people complain about Auburn sets which I've have in the past but Auburn's really done some like interesting stuff this uh this year with Baroom at the kind of either operating at the top of the key or kind of a high post but basically uh he had a couple moments him being Baroom where he would pretty much face the rim, and uh, instead of like doing a dribble handoff of Trey, Trey would run, get a running start, and then Broom would just pretty much almost like a bounce pass into space to the left of him. Trey would catch it while still having uh, a full head of steam going to the cup. And uh, Trey's a very crafty uh, finisher. I wouldn't say like he has the best like handle combination of all time. But he's a very crafty uh, guy going to the rim, either between some of his like pat and then like stop and pop mid ranges, or some very interesting finishes uh, layups as he's had today. Um, one that was just like incredible that I'd recommend anybody to if you catch the highlights from here when you see it, just kind of run it back and just see how swift the moves, the combination moves he made to get that layup off. Um, but yeah, I mean this is his this is his like to me Trey has been your best point guard option. In SEC play, and it's not even like quote close. The minutes have been close, and sometimes even Aiden's favor. But this is a guy that should be closing halves for you. Should be starting halves. Um, Twenty five minutes to fifteen for Aiden. I would say that's a safe amount because generally speaking, if you're doing that, I think Aiden closed the first half. But generally speaking, if you're doing that, that means he's playing the most important stretches, which is the end and beginning of each half. That's how I think it should work out. Uh, Trey's a calming force. He is, at this point, in my opinion, just a better shooter than Aiden. And I don't, I don't think, like, percentage-wise, it can't really be close. I don't know the numbers for Trey, but it, it can't be close. It literally just can't be at this point. By, by really nature of, like, Aiden shooting it as Trey. And I'm not downing Aiden wholeheartedly in this. I kind of, like, think that people are not understanding how difficult it is to be a freshman um, specifically like a finesse freshman. Like he is a guy who plays a very um not physical brand of, of basketball. He is not going to always look to go to the cup. He's not always going to look to go into uh, a defender's body to make those layups. And this is stuff that he'll probably learn, you know, in successive years. Like I I am still very bullish on him as a three year, four year like college basketball player. It's just like some of that finishing into somebody's body while trying to get a layup off. Um, some of the in-between game as a smaller guard. Like, Trey has, like, a ton of those, like, stop-and-pop mid-ranges, a ton of those floaters. Um, just game that, like, you're going to have to learn over time that Aiden will almost surely do so. But for a freshman that is a undersized guard that plays finesse, the SEC is going to eat you up alive uh, because that's pretty much, like, the antithesis of the way a lot of high-end – uh, SEC players play. If you think about some of your best guards, um, Mark Sears, Emmanuel Quickly, uh, Tyrese Matsey, 
you know, I mean, all these dudes, like, these are guys that, for the most part, like, had to really get out the mud with either some very creative off-the-ball uh, maneuvering to get themselves to the cup or just really patented uh, lays up, uh, layups around the rim, games around the rim, you know, stuff like that. And uh, one day that can definitely be Holloway. Like, all the tools are there. He has some – his handle – isn't the greatest to me, but it also, like, it's a product of, like, he doesn't handle body-to-body contact well. So, if he does get space, he can create space for a three-pointer, but it's not always, like, he's a guy that you can clearly tell practice a lot of off-ball dribbling. Um, Well, not off-ball dribbling, off-ball shooting. What am I trying to say? Off-dribble shooting. He, he practiced a lot of off dribble shooting as in when somebody has you uh they're on your hip you know really bodying you up you're shooting these shots off the dribble uh off platform as in your feet are not set Steph Curry does a lot of this in terms of practicing and obviously doing it in game and it was pretty much ran with Aiden uh, in terms of some of the the media bits before the season that is something he does a lot he practices those type of shots and you can tell that's something that he at least in his head, feels comfortable doing. Um, the problem is that, like, when you're off platform and you're being rushed uh, mentally, uh, those shots just don't flow as they should. Um, and you know, he just he's had a lot, like a ton, that are like almost in there. Like you hit the, you know, the little divider between the hoop and the backboard. Seen a lot of those. A lot of, like, to the left or right of the backboard. Like, he clearly is, like, close to where he needs to be at. But it's going to take an offseason to get him where he needs to get to. I shouldn't have given Aiden that much of a segment because, I mean, it's not Aiden's day. But uh, I just wanted to, to express that because I haven't gotten to talk about Auburn basketball in a while. This might be a little bit of a longer episode, by the way. Uh, I got to give Chris more props for him to open three. Uh, it came as a result of Chad uh, swinging it. Jalen got it. Had a actually a pretty good look, and he chose to sw- swing it himself. And in doing that, uh, open Chris Moore look that he got and drained it. Uh, Chris Moore, somebody actually was like a really good three point shooter for Auburn a couple years ago on uh, open shots. I don't remember any percentages or anything like that, but he was a guy that uh, when you gave it to him wide open, because of mechanically speaking, I mean, he has a very slow release, um, to the very least, and um. But it was one that went in when he was open. He shot on very low volume, of course. But I say it to say that uh, you look around and he hasn't been doing those type of shots, obviously, this season, which is a good reason why he doesn't have the minutes he's, you know, would have, I guess, liked to see. But um, when he makes those shots, you know, it definitely helps overall in the spacing when he's out there. Um, let's see, I mentioned Trey. Uh, I guess Jalen and Broomby last for the cover here in terms of the big names. Um, so yeah, Jalen, uh, it's been tough. Like, I, the w- one guy on a forum that I post on made a very, like, kind of astute point where, like, he mentioned that Jalen pretty much played, like, the same game, more or less, as he has years past, but just with a lot more efficiency. And I think that uh, when he posted, like, maybe, like, the very beginning, I think it was, like, after the A&M game, I want to say, which I think at that point would have been a little bit like, wow, I can't believe you're saying that type of statement. But like, the games after that kind of like bore out like the reasoning there because he kind of has played the same game he has played before. If he's getting open threes, he's going to shoot them. If the defense is not giving him like, you know, the easy like, uh, you know, step around the rim, easy dunk. You know, he's going to settle for like a little bit of a baby hook. Um, when he goes up against size, you know, he's kind of going to go up a little bit softer. Um, this is just what we've seen these last few games for the most part. Um, I know, like, I, I don't even call like the home games per se. I mean, it's, like everybody plays better in the home games. I, I think this should be like understood at this point. But it's one of those road moments uh, against really quality uh, challenges. You know, he pretty much disappeared more or less in terms of offensive production. Um, but this game in particular, like this to me, I know he went, you know, one of four from three, 
uh, 16 points was definitely a lot lower than some of his other like outings that are a little bit more cherished. To me, this might have been his best game because it came that that A and M one where they had you know not a ton of offensive you know production from a lot of guys that could be up there as well. But it's either it either be that or this one because of the simple fact that like this is a you know. I wouldn't say a quality defense or anything, but it has a ton of real physicality, energy amongst the forwards. Uh, Breakfield, Sissy. Um, I'm not trying to be like mean to. I actually don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Sissy. I actually think it's how it's pronounced. Um, and then Flanagan, obviously. Uh, just some real like energy and athleticism amongst those forwards. And I mean, he won the matchup. I would say amongst the bigs. I mean. You know, since he had 12, he would have been like the matchup, I guess, with Broom. Breakfield probably co comparable, if not about equal, to, Bro uh, to to Williams. But, like, you know, when you consider, like, he came on late and Breakfield, for the most part, like, got going, you know, kind of earlier. You can maybe give it to Jalen if you want to. The point being, like, Jalen had uh, one one good move where he caught it around the right side of the rim. Uh, it took, uh, well, I guess what you would call maybe a hop step. I mean, or maybe be a drop step, rather. Got to the other side of the rim and then just dunked it, you know, against contact. Um, he had some good putbacks, uh, at least one putback I think of. Uh, made an open three. I, some of those three, like, even though some of the missed ones were, like, open, but, like, you know, sometimes I kind of wish he would do a little bit, you know, be more, a little bit more aggressive. But he was more aggressive today uh, for the most part. He came on late, like I said. Uh, gave him five rebounds. Against, you know, Breakfield, who I think has plus athleticism on him and plus uh, physicality, like, like his frame is bigger. Um, that's a winning, you know, kind of combination. Some really shitty passes by Williams, I will say, if I had to say anything. Uh, I think he had, he had three turnovers. And I want to say, like, at least two of those turnovers were in the first half. Because one was, like, uh, a play. Uh, the Bigs just had some really shitty, like, lazy passes in, in that first half. But one, I think, was to Broom. I don't know what the other one was to, but I think two of them were in the first half, and they were like, basically, he was open, trying to get it out, because he's being contested. Uh, the guy he was trying to throw it to was kind of contested, he just threw like a just duck, and the guy picked it off and ran it back. That's how a lot of their points in the first half came about, was just like lazy passing, lazy handling, um, and then they would just kind of get off to the races and get easy layups and transition. Transition defense was fucking terrible in the first half, but they really just shored up in the second half. Gave them very few things easy in either the um, transition or in, around the rim. And that means something when you have, like, the athleticism they have in, amongst their, their bigs and just how crafty they're... Like, their guys are really crafty and creating, like, you know, kind of step backs or, or open shots around the perimeter. They're not really, I would say, like the best drivers of all time, like Morrell, Mur Flanagan, um, or or Murray, who went 2 of 12, goddamn. Um, but they are interesting in the, in how they kind of, like, will go ahead and, and get you some um, some good step backs and stuff like that. However, uh, shout out to Broom, who played, like, really good perimeter defense again. I thought he was really good, uh, even underrated, against Alabama on the perimeter. Uh, although, obviously, like, Sears, potentially, like, SEC player of the year, uh, gave him a couple, like, kind of crazy uh, possessions when he had him isolated. But he played, I think, very well against him in, on the perimeter uh, in that game. And he played fantastic in perimeter in this game, in my opinion, uh, when switched out. And um, I think that's about – do I have any other points I wanted to hit? Um the free throws went nine to thirteen. Uh, Rebels they had thirteen to seventeen, so they lost that battle. Uh, Auburn went twelve to seven from three. They went eight to nineteen, so it got up eight more shots and made four more. So about equal in percentage, but uh, you know they want to put up a lot of those shots if they can help it. Um, field goal wise, thirty five to sixty four, uh, fifty five percent. Flanagan, or Flanagan, Ole Miss, they went 28-62, so almost equal in terms of shots output, but uh, 28-62, 45%, so not great. Uh, 11 turnovers, uh, much. They had, I think it was 